Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next topic of our discussion is chronic cholecystitis. So chronic cholecystitis refers to persistent infection of gallbladder for a longer period of time. An acute infection of the gallbladder also known as acute cholecystitis which is of intermittent nature persists over time for a considerable duration resulting in repeated bouts of attack ultimately converts into chronic cholecystitis. The most common causes of chronic cholecystitis include gallstones, presence of infections and certain tumors such as tumor of cystic duct or gallbladder carcinoma itself can result in chronic cholecystitis. Moreover, non-solid crystals are also present forming a sludge. This sludge can also block the cystic duct hence resulting in chronic inflammation. The chronic cholecystitis results from intermittent obstruction. Intermittent means partial obstruction or incomplete obstruction. So what happens in case of incomplete obstruction? There is some retention but small amount of bile can also flow out into the bile duct. So this intermittent obstruction leads to bouts of acute inflammation. These bouts are of low grade and mostly ignored by the patient. These repeated bouts of low grade inflammation lead to prolonged injury to the gallbladder mucosal cells. This prolonged injury results in a cycle of injury and healing. The prolonged duration injury to mucosa also releases certain chemicals such as tissue growth factors. These tissue growth factors and certain other chemical mediators recruit the chronic inflammatory cells such as macrophages, lymphocytes and monocytes which ultimately leads to fibrosis and hypertrophy of the gallbladder wall. The fibrosis is typically subserosal, which means it is below the serosa. Serosa is the outer layer of an organ. The gross appearance of the gallbladder reveals a smooth and glistening serosa, which means it is unaffected. In advanced cases, the serosa appears to be dull due to subserosal fibrosis. The cut section of the gallbladder reveals preservation of the mucosa in the most cases whereas the gallbladder wall is thickened due to chronic inflammation and there is greenish to yellow bile inside the gallbladder lumen. In most cases of chronic cholecystitis there are small stones present inside the lumen and there could also be biliary sludge. The histological picture reveals chronic inflammatory exudate which in mild cases is composed of macrophages, plasma cells and lymphocytes. In more severe cases, monocytes are also present. These monocytes result in the fibrosis. Fibrosis is typically subserosal and it is present in advanced cases. One particular feature about chronic cholecystitis is Rokitansky ash of sinuses. These Rokitansky ash of sinuses are formed as a result of reactive changes in the mucosa which leads to hypertrophy of the mucosa and this hypertrophic mucosa folds upon itself and the sinuses are formed within these folds. These sinuses are known as Rokitansky ash of sinuses. So let's say this is the portion of the gallbladder mucosa. In case of hypertrophy there is folding of the mucosa upon itself, hence forming certain sinuses between these folds. This is a mucosal fold and this is a sinus within this fold known as Rokitansky ash of sinus. The histological picture reveals a Rokitansky ash of sinus. These here are the folds of hypertrophic mucosa and this large portion here is a sinus formed within the hypertrophic folds of mucosa. These Rokitansky ash of sinuses are filled with the bile. As you can see here, this demonstrates the bile. In certain cases of chronic cholecystitis, acute inflammatory cells such as neutrophils are often present in case of a superimposed infection. 
chronic cholecystitis might also progress into a severe condition known as porcelain gallbladder. Porcelain gallbladder means calcification of walls of gallbladder. In this case, the gallbladder is converted into a solid structure known as porcelain gallbladder. The patient has a history of recurrent epigastric or right hypochondrial pain and the patient presents with a vague or dull pain in the right hypochondrium. There is also nausea and vomiting and loss of appetite. One particular feature is that there is intolerance to the fatty foods which often leads to flatulence and moreover there is an increased risk of gallbladder carcinoma. The only treatment for chronic cholecystitis is surgical removal or cholecystectomy. The common complications of chronic cholecystitis include superimposed acute infection, gallbladder perforation which can lead to peritonitis and hemorrhagic shock as well due to bleeding from the perforated gallbladder. Moreover, the long-term complications include gallbladder carcinoma and gallstone ileus. So this brings us to the end of discussion about chronic cholecystitis. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.